the mega logai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh, Sitkanu, to the highest, and peace be to be the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. The pilgrimage trip on this earth may lead them to realize, as Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 4 teaches to us, that by the wisdom of this world and the understanding it might have got to gain a great estate of gold and silver and depositing it into its treasuries it could be thinking it can have the great life the true life the life of this earth to be enjoying at each and every facet that it walks through but we know very well, as Peter writes for us in the Fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit for us to understand that this great salvation of, of the great redemption work of Christ, wherewith we have been saved to achieve the eternal life, is not been made by gold or silver. And all your good deeds have been counted in Isaiah chapter 64 to say that they are ministrous cloth. Therefore the salvation for us, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, which says, By grace you are being saved through faith. And therefore we say, Peace be to be the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. The unbelieving being defiled in the conscious as well as in the thoughts of their mind, who can help them except they themselves could overcome the belief of unbelief by making their eyes with one light. But we know very well, though the scripture says for us, before the foundation of the world, disruption of the world, and the conclusion of this eons for the repudiation of the sin, is through the sacrifice of Christ our Lord our God to be manifested for us and it is not dubious or uncertain but it is a hundred percent fact before the foundation of the world being chosen for us as he says the repudiation of the sin which is nothing but the conclusion of the eons conclusion of the ages and for that to call the church age is one among the age which after the rapture of the church and the millennium rule the ages to follow one upon the another says Ephesians 2 7 we have been kept aside we have been kept purely for the work of the Lord our God we have been demanded to be the objects of his grace to be presented and for which cause he says the conclusion of the eons, the repudiation of the sin or the unplacing of this sin is through the sacrifice of my Christ on the cross for you and for me, the propitiation work. And for which cause, dear brethren, we know very well, as we were reading yesterday in Ephesians 2, and we read verse number 2 to say, in the time past, you were walking according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of this air, and that spirit which now worketh in the children of disobedience, the adult sons of disobedience. And why they are disobedience? 
because they don't believe that they have been though dead in trespasses and sins have been now made alive quickened from that and they have been given this great privilege by Lord God the Father who is rich in grace and mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us and while we were dead in our sins he made us alive together with Christ and raised us up together and not only just made us alive or raised up but he has made us to sit in the heavenly places of Christ Jesus our Lord our God and he says for us in 2 7 that in the ages to be coming one upon the another to show the exceeding riches of his grace in his crushed out his kindness towards us those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ towards us through Christ Jesus and he says for by grace you are being saved through faith and not of yourselves it is the gift of Lord our God so that not of works lest any man should boast considering this dear brethren yesterday we were looking the devil 7 7 and we were looking the notes from Robert Bunker Thieme and we were considering the great importance of Bible doctrine to be number one priority even as such over here in today when we go back and read Ezekiel chapter 28 it describes about the character of Satan the way how great was the fall of it by considering itself to be like the Most High God. It goes on to read when we're reading now in Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 1 through 10. It talks about the governor and we go from 11 and following till to verse number 18. It talks about Satan himself. And here we find the governor is no longer or he can be far wisdomized than Daniel. That's what 28.3 is all about. And coming back to 28.4, we read the greatest verse of all time which says for us how the world has been blinded in the lustful patterns of its greatest treasures of all time therefore in the Hebrew it says for us because of thine wisdom kakma and thine understanding you made for you the estate and you are doing gold and silver the greatest treasuries of you and what is that estate what they have made to say and to think salvation could be achieved by our works salvation could be achieved by being good to others salvation could be achieved when we do charity works but no not at all the Hebrew word for which we have been called kakma it leads into many false things because the wisdom of this world is not greater than the foolishness of my Christ the foolishness of my Christ to die for you and for me on the cross because we have been born in the old sin nature and we cannot overcome our own sins we cannot quicken our own sins but through Christ being raised by the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit after believing him and becoming to reflect like Stephen we have been said the great glory wherewith we shall sit in the heavenly places with Christ God the Father in heaven and for that cause he prayed for us in John chapter 17 and teaches to us the greatest privileges of all time <coughs> excuse me <coughs> the privilege that we have been made known and that is what no raise of we were looking yesterday wherewith he declares to us to have the knowledge of Ginosko and Ginosko meant to say for us the thinking the reflecting and having the mind of Christ this great reflecting and mind of Christ will certainly cause us to overcome the wisdom of this world the wisdom of this world the kakma to have their skill to have their administration to have their prudence to have their ethical and religious activities and increasing in their understanding taboon and that understanding is nothing but the act of understanding the skill the faculty of understanding the intelligence the object of knowledge and to have a personification understanding meant to say as teacher this 
Thabun has much to tell about your intelligence. It can go for desertion. It can come for your reasoning. Therefore, with thy wisdom and understanding, Satava Lord of God, to the cosmos diabolicus or the prince of the power of this air. And we have read in Ezekiel chapter 27. The entire description of the descendants of Shamham and Japhat, how they should have been to the glory of the Lord of a God, and how they have rejected that glory and became the glory of this world by believing the principles to be more glorious in the terms of their own activities for salvation. They ended up in the battle of Yams, but they couldn't stand. They are happy to be into the fetishes of happiness, the curacious of gibbets, and trying to show and shine forth the ivory masks or the tasks of their lives. And that's the wisdom what they think, erecting the principles of ivory task. And we know very well, dear brethren, no matter how the prince of the power of this air, Satan, may think it can blind, it can blind only them who are not believers in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But the sad part is, the Christian believers were not able to put to death the all sin nature life. They are also been blinded and they have becoming the sons of disobedience. What a shame it is. Therefore, the world's wisdom and understanding has got for them to build up Asa, to accomplish, to fashion. The Greek, the Hebrew word, what we read in Deuteronomy 29, and we shall do them of 29th verse. Asa, we shall build it and show it up in practical reality that we are evident of it. We are not just dubious, but we are evident. Neither we are doubtful, but we are the glorious children of the Lord our God, and we are able to show forth His glory, and that's the great greatness of confidence we have, and we are not having to be doubtful. As I meant to say, to make it into practical reality by building it up. Here, Satan uses in 28.4 of Ezekiel that it has begotten, it has made into reality, it has gotten to do the things producing to make an, an, an acquiring property or making it to have in reality to achieve it. And what it is making to get into Asa? The number one, the richest, Zahab. A splendor, a brilliance of it. This is how Satan tries to work. Having a film cover over your eyes or film coat over your eyes. It works brilliance and splendor. What? Not to believe in my Christ. It shows for you all the details of this life to be pleasurable. Seeking, searching, and working for those things where the word of the Lord of God says, Don't you look upon the animals, don't you look upon the birds of the air, don't you look upon the very hair of your head has been counted in my account, and why do you worry seeking the way of the pagans and the heathens and the unbelievers seek for their belly, for their care? We are the bond slaves of the great king. It is he who shall take care of us in the great invisible portfolio of greatest assets of Baltimore privileges of all time given to us. The world may work for its own estates or riches to show forth its brilliance and splendor. But we, the church age believers, are already having it by grace in Christ. When we have Christ, when we have His Word in us, when we have to be constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, neither grieving, nor squelching, nor deceiving, nor making our lives in the terms of peril, like it, Zomai, the miscalculation of your real calling, then you know very well you are having the estates of this entire heaven and the earth. 
for which cause Satan tempted my Lord and took and went to the highest pinnacle and showed just bow down to me and I will give you all the things and Christ our Lord our God said first comes the cross then the crown he said we shall worship and pay homage only to our Lord our God likewise over here on this earth for us when we are suffering for Christ we know very well that all things have been given into our hands in oppositional sanctification Therefore, what a privilege he says in Matthew chapter 16 for us to learn. Whatsoever you bind on this earth will be bound in the heaven. Whatsoever you lose on this earth will be loosed in the heaven. Don't you not think that we have power and authority because of being the bond slaves or the prisoners of Christ and we are able to perform that in reality? What it is that is hindering you to worry and to still seek the details of this life as number one priority. When we have read the greatest description of the failure in Ezekiel chapter 27 about the cosmos diabolicus thinking, having to recognize the entire continents, what you can call, or countries into the realization of divisions of it. The Sham, Ham and Japhat, the way that should be the glory of the Lord of a God, they became the glory of this world. And the great things what we look and read, again in Ezekiel 28, 4, to recognize, in thy wisdom and understanding you have gained riches. And that riches has blinded the eyes of this man not to believe in the gospel of my Christ. And they want to say that they can achieve to go to the Lord by God because they require bribes, they require tithes, they require begging. And they tell salvation could be purchased by money, salvation could be purchased by works. And how hard our Lord of our God said upon the face of the rich man that they cannot enter, how hard it is for them to enter. The camel can unload on its weight and enter into the gate of the, of the city village, the eye gate. But it is hard for this rich man to go because they are having the riches to be mindful, to think that they can gain the salvation and forgo the only unique work of my Christ on the cross, the repudiation of the sin which is the conclusion of the eons through one sacrifice before the disruption of the world. Whether they believe it or not, dear brethren, our duty is to proclaim to them. We are not by only the audible voice, but by the holy manner rock of life, which is more, more powerful than the voice that we preach, because we know very well action speaks more louder than the words. The Nietzsche when he said show me your redeemed deeds then I will believe your Redeemer what a great caution it will be in the life of us that the holy manner walk of life in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit breath by breath to be so great and make them to understand it is not by money the way how they are brilliant in splendor and absolute mannerism of this earth, particularly in my country, India, for the daimonian idotes which they proclaim, which they perform, though being blind in their thinking. But that brilliance and splendor for the glory of the word of the Lord of our God, for the Christian nations, daily recognizing and daily teaching them like Ezra, daily making them to be the scribes, daily making them that they are of one seed as Psalms chapter 22 verses 29 teaches to us to understand that they shall come the sophars which we shall recount and they shall be the glorious people of this earth. And for by that one seed who we are, by Christ. The main problem with us is, we don't go to learn the importance of Bible doctrine, which is far more evident in our pulpits. 
to look and to realize that this men have replaced Bible doctrine with the things pertaining to their own thinking. Therefore, when we read verse number 30, that is what, not 29, a seed, Zara, and in the Greek, Sperma, and that Sperma seed of Christ, the Zara of Yahweh Elohim in the past dispensation, shall serve him. And the word which has been used for us to serve is called as Abad. And what do they do? They labor. They work for another. Our duty as belonging to Christ as born slaves is to be carefree in the hands of the Lord of our God who said for us, cast all your worries upon me, I care for you. Who said for us, take my yoke which is easy, take my burden which is light and follow me. And who said for us to realize the very hair of your head I have counted. Why do you worry about those things? And he said first you go and preach the kingdom of the Lord of our God by following me. Far, the, far less you can go and be farewell how important it will be for us to be like Matthew the Levite when he was being called he said and he rose from there and he followed him immediately says the scripture no clauses no conditions over there so for us as well to serve our Lord our God it demands that we should be prepared without preparation you will be like a sounding bass wherewith there is nothing in it you shall not blow the trumpet, evidently. The preparation will call not in the terms of pipe or hyper or harp, but it calls in the terms of the trumpet, blowing the trumpet. Do you know what a great privilege it is for us to blow the trumpet in the presence of the Lord of our God daily? And how you have to show forth by making it evident by serving him the very word what we speak it has been there for you to be justified at the judgment seat of Christ because as Apostle Paul says truth is in me and no one can stop boasting of me and for that truth Lord of a God is our witness so shall be the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher in training you up for the praise of his glory in his grace And that Lord of a God being our witness, we are here to serve Him for laboring one another to make, to be causing to work and to serve our Lord of a God. Therefore, a seed shall serve Him and it shall be accounted again the Hebrew word Safar, which is nothing but to become like the scribe. And what do they do, the scribes? These are the scribes where the word says, to the Lord for a generation. And the generation meant to say, for a period, for an age. And they shall be a dwelling place, a habitation, and that's what we, the church age believers, are. We are called as kinecatesis, the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, making a path for us by cleansing the garbage in our soul for Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and Lord God the Father in heaven. That's what we are, the dwelling place or a habitation or a generation characterized by a great quality of spiritual one and condition and that we are a class of men because we have been said to be like men and to be not falling away by standing steadfast, by becoming the adult children. And furthermore, a generation for us, a great period for us, wherewith the dwelling will be forever. So Psalms 22, 30 teaches for us, a sheet shall serve him and it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. And the Lord over here, when we read, it says for us, dear brethren, Adonai, not Elohim. And Adonai, the spoken in place of Yahweh in Jewish display of reverence. We are not talking over here Elohim, but we are talking Adonai. And that could be in simple terms, Yahweh El Elyon Elohim, or Adonai Yahweh El Elyon. The way how the Jewish people display the reverence, they use the word called as Adonai.
they don't call elohim elohim is gods which has been used even for other words they want to keep that special reverence to the lord of a god even in the titles of him therefore they call him as adonai which is an emphatic form of adon which is firm strong our master creators and it refers to the lord of a god it refers to the lord of the whole earth of lords of lords and king uh, who is a lord of lords and king of kings and the marshal the government which shall be upon his shoulders and that reference to god our lord wherewith we have been calling him as our husband as yahweh elohim therefore dear brethren we find over here they shall serve the lord or it shall be account for the Lord and for what for a generations for a dwelling place for a habitation for a period and that's the church age today and we have been given such great privilege to serve that great Lord of a God by faith alone in Christ alone and yet Satan thinks it shall be serving the world by increasing their wisdom and knowledge or understanding and causing them to be away from the right word of the Lord our God causing them to walk according to the prince of the power of this air rule leading them as friend making them to believe that gold and silver will certainly deliver them and forgetting the great principle what the Bible says not by works neither by your gold or silver but by the precious blood of the lamb on the cross who has been given for the great purpose that we shall be saved and dear brethren how much of the messianic psalm when we come back and look that we have his zara we have his sperm that's what was john 3 9 says for us we have to be like him by faith alone in christ alone and we have been demanded that we are the habitable place and we are the people where the word of the Lord of a God for a generation and that's the generation beginning from the Pentecost till to the time of the rapture being indwelled by the Trinity God of our Lord and we are here to serve him and we are here for him for his work to be manifested in our flesh and how many days more you want to end up in sin and this sir what we call the hebrew word abad meant to say to labor to serve as subjects to serve lord of a god the way how the levitical priesthood was been there to work for the lord's glory to labor for his work and to be led to serve him and this great privilege which has been given for us to say that it is our master in heaven who shall take care of all the things for us in the heaven and provide for the details of this life on this earth as well then why we let go to worry the things of this earth and work out for our own gold and silver those things the unbelievers do does not Isaiah chapter 51 teaches for us the water that has been given freely for you the one who is thirsty let him come and drink the salvation is absolutely free besides that salvation we have been demanded that we have the sperm of Christ we have the zero of Christ therefore we shall be the people being entangled or enticed or to be to the praise of his work on this earth and demanding that we shall serve him as bond slaves you're no longer slaves to the old sin nature being transformed from the old sin nature slavery into the slavery of righteousness of the Lord of a God what a great privilege it is for us because what for we have the sperm of Christ this has been written long back in the book of Psalms we are not talking now in the church age the church age doctrine being delineated for us to understand that we are the slaves of Christ to be Romans chapter 6 when he says no longer the slaves of slavery of sin but we are the slaves for the righteousness of the Lord of a God and we have been told to understand as 1 John 3 9 says we have the sperm of Christ therefore 1 John 2 6 concludes as our Lord our God the Father in heaven made 
Christ Jesus our Lord our God to walk in spirit to live in spirit to march in spirit and to reign in spirit so we shall also constantly being in the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit shall perform the same work of Christ in our lives and manifest the glory of the Lord our God to the highest and how we have to manifest it not in dubias but in hundred percent manifesting that we blow the trumpet we did not make an uncertain sound every breath of our life in the highest and the best and the greatest volume of privileges and the portfolio of the invisible assets to every believer by using them believing them walking in them we made to blow the trumpet we made them for being prepared themselves to the battle the battle which is not going to come the battle which is ongoing breath by breath as Samus could say for us I believe therefore I spoke the things pertaining to Bible doctrine who is going to fulfill the desires of our heart when we walk according to the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit we are speaking for you to understand that you will be the sufferer you will be the scribe and Christ our Lord our God in the Gospel of Matthew he teaches every scribe being instructed every scribe being made the disciple for the word of the Lord our God and the way how they shall serve and the word which shall serve for them is to work and it shall be accounted the Hebrew word Safar what we read in the same Psalms 22 Safar meant to say to become scribe Safar meant to say for you that you are being called to be the kings and priests for the Lord our God and if you are a king the demand for the Bible doctrine is that Deuteronomy 17 18 which teaches for us to write down and keep a law with you the kata process the description the inscription the prescription and the subscription work of daily writing Bible doctrine dear brethren taking from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 22 21 in the translations what you read for the first time that we call the filth the second time what you go it is in the original Hebrew Greek and Aramaic that is also a filth but it is a mediator between the filth and to get a foundation into the word languages of the scriptures the third time when you write it's in between Hebrew Greek and Aramaic that's the original language and you go there to crack down the every strong code over eight and a half thousand in the Hebrew or more than five and five thousand six hundred in the Greek therefore you conquer them daily and you meditate upon that and you go back to look upon the original languages of the scriptures the intentional of it the way how they have been used in the Old Testament the way it has been used in philosophical the way it has been used in the terms of the the New Testament the way of the Attic Greek classical Greek or the Doic Greek or the things pertaining to the word of the Lord our God you take from there in history and you go back and dig and study from the third time in the original Hebrew Greek and Aramaic and as a sign that you are passed down from the filth into the right word of the Lord our God if it is possible for you all though it is not compulsory because we are not here to impose anything for you to be pertaining to the law but we could say as a sign for you in your Conscious at least, circumcise. Barry Thomas, circumcise. Your heart, your ear, your spirit, your mind. And change the facets of your thinking of your soul from human viewpoint and make it to be divine viewpoint by the original languages of the scriptures, what it clearly meant for us. And in the Council of Acts chapter 15, if it is by the commandment of the Lord of God to tell them, because we know very well what it is going to happen in the present Christendom and we go back and look into the history. But Christ our Lord being the omniscient knowledge, He knows whom to send, where to send, how to send in this battle of Eon. It would have been better for them to pen if ever you want to carry your circumcision process of your flesh. And when you get out of the filth of your translation, when you get out into the interlinear and you want to put your foundation in the original language of the scriptures, then you circumcise. Rather than keeping the law, what you think of rituals. 
But Lord our God has not made that because he knew very well every believer have to come for exegiomai. Every believer have to come face to face from the original languages of the scriptures. And for that cause he has appointed the pastor teachers not to go back and teach for you in your translations. Translations indeed are needed but they are not the original thought. They are not the rule. But Christ says for us in Colossians 2, 4 through 7, being rooted and grounded in the love of the Lord of a God, being built upon in Christ. So as is, so you shall walk. Therefore be aware about the beguiling nature, who will easily beguile you with the vain philosophy, and they will teach to you vain decides. And the Greek word para lagizomai, what a great important word it is. Alongside they calculate your valuation like an arbitrator. And what they're calculating? Lies. The same thing what James writes for us. Be not be just hearers of the word, but be doers of the word and do not deceive yourself. Again, we find the same Greek word para lagizomai. Therefore, he wants for us to be aware about the wrath which shall not work or produce in you the character or the righteousness of Christ. What is that wrath of you? Ignoring to come every day to Bible class, taking up your cross and following my Christ every day. For the pastor teacher, ignoring for them to come and teach daily Bible doctrine. Today, in the present Christendom, how many languages have been there, the Bible being translated, if everyone would write for the first time, they would be supplied with the second time in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, and when they would go through the interlinear, and they would come out, and they would now no longer walk into the translations, but they depend only upon the original language of the scriptures. That is the time for them, if they would ever think, circumcision would have been kept in the church age, as such we can find many Jewish preachers proclaiming in the church age as well, that the law, that to keep the law, and to fulfill the circumcision as well it will be for them to understand after writing the second time in the interlinear if our God is our God of Allah is providing for them grace kneeling down and writing and when they will realize that pain the second time when they finish it let them go and have the circumcision to show forth the mark that they have been clear from the filth of this world and they have get back or got back into the original languages of the scriptures. And the way what we find in Lamentations 2.22, the fear, shrinking fear surrounded me. When you are in an isolated place, when there is no one for, million, for, for a far away of miles, the terror what you get. That is nothing in comparison to the shrinking terror where our Lord our God has made the unweaned children and their soul absolutely taken out. And therefore he tells for us, your soul cannot live for yourself. And by that we mean again, your salvation cannot be worked out by your own ways. The Mashal, the heaven and the earth, our Lord, our God, who has made this. It is He who has to provide for you this great privilege. And therefore, He says in the same Psalms 22, 29, And all that they be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship. And being fat in the sense of these greatest privileges of all time, what we have in the church age, shall eat. And the Hebrew word shall eat is very, very great importance for us. It meant to say to devour and to burn up and to be fed a cow. And the same thing of the earth, we are talking not Adama but Aretes. Again, what we read long back. The same thing what he says in Jeremiah 31, 22. The earth again erates. Like a female who is going to surround her great man, Geber, man of a strength. So shall the earth erates will absolutely surround her master, her creator of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore here we find 
the fat the earth shall eat and what is the resultant of it when they eat daily in the word of the lord of our god in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit they shall bow down shakak they shall bow down for a superior one in homage they shall bow down as a prostrate before the lord of our god and proskune in the greek face to face worship and bowing down and kissing And furthermore, and they that go down to the dust shall bow before him. And that's the fact what we are telling to every day, dear brethren, before he could die. You know very well after we die, we know with the one who is our creator. We know the one who is our Lord, our God. We know the one, the way how Elijah said, show to my servant Lord the chariots of fire. We know our Redeemer. We know the Lord our God whom we serve. For that cause even Stephen prayed, Father, forgive their sin. Do not add it to their account. Because he knows very well those who don't believe in that great Lord our God who has been the Messiah at that time being revealed for them and they were waited. And when he revealed, they could not believe upon him. And the martyrs, the way how they died, though witnessing for the truth, they did not add for them or they say when they were being beaten to that, to the point not to give sin into their account. But they said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do exact principles of Christ what Stephen prays in Acts 7 55 through 58 why what is the reason because when they go down when they go down to the dust they knew very well the only creator almighty Lord of our God Yahweh El Elyon Elohim being revealed in the flesh as Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They know which go down will certainly bow down before the presence of the Lord of our God. And they knew very well, though they put him to though they put him to death like a martyrdom, why they ask not to add sin to their account and ask for them to forgive? Because they will be forever in the eternal lake of fire. Therefore, for them praying to be forgiven and having a chance of repentance and to believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because that eternal lake of fire for eons and for eons being preserved and kept for evil Satan and for the things of its agents and those unbelieving men, in spite of giving them great witnesses of truth like pharaoh hardening their hearts and not believing. Why about talking about pharaoh? Let's talk about Judas Iscariot. The man who found guilt, but he could not believe in the Lord by asking forgiveness to the Lord of a God. And what the scripture has been written to be fulfilled, says the word, so it is in John 3.18 and 3.36. So it is in John 5.24. So it is in Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Whether you love it, believe it, take it or not, the scripture to be fulfilled, it stands, it stands written forever and forever, though the heaven and the earth will perish off, and we are being made from the dust, though we go down to the dust, at the word of the Lord our God shall reign forever and forever, and it abides forever and forever. The scripture, the word of the Lord our God to be fulfilled, though the man who took part in his own Lord's Supper, when the word of the Lord of our God says, the son of perdition accept him, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. That's it. The predestination choice between Isa and Jacob, our Lord of our God found Jacob rather than Isa, it is his predestination. Though we may have to think and to understand, to know it by experientially. And that's what one of the Greek word is. Oida or Veda or Yada of the Hebrew or Veda of the Sanskrit. You cannot understand why our Lord of our God said Jacob I have loved, Isa I have hated. It is his choice. Because he knew in eternity past what the things will be, how the things would be. 
for us to conceive that things of those men it may take time because we are not having all the facts neither we are aware to look because man's sight is always evil but outward they appear to be something good and that why we talk about unbelievers let's talk about our own Christian and pastor teachers if not why they have conflicts among them and why they go to the court of the law among unbelievers and stand for judgment the brother whom they see they can't love and they say they are loving the unseen God doesn't the scripture conclude that they are liars they're culprits and yet they say we are loving Lord of a God and for that cause though they appear something to be in front of you and they're nothing in reality and though we have hundreds of years of experience to look and to learn about them, we have the infallible inerrant word of the Lord our God which says, In every nation as the way how Cornelius was being told in Acts chapter 10, those who seek to do the love of the Lord our God and the righteousness of all the things pertaining to his will in fear of him, they shall be honored. It's ultimate thing what we read, fear, fear, fear that we pay back to the Lord our God. And they that fear him will rise up a banner of truth, says Psalm 60 verses 4. In spite of those great men, the past downing of Gaidan was being given to Timothy, the one who would fear. But here we find in the Hebrew the word fear, karad, meant to say tremble, tremble, tremble. Not just fear. Or not even to be like the shrinking fear more than that thousand times or million times. That fear which should run in our hearts, that fear which should meditate our minds, that fear which should cause us to say not to bind up to become legalistical ritual one, but to be the fear of the one to say to honor Lord's word and by believing his word. And we shall reign in the mannerism of Christ on this earth, for which cause he has said, If a slave will be like his master, that's enough. And doesn't the scripture say for us in Psalms 35 as well, Those who fear him, the desires of their heart shall be fulfilled, saith of the Lord of a God. And that what we fear. The word says, lest the promises of the word of the Lord our God being not mixed with faith, you may lose it and you fear for it. But we say the promises, it happened in that generation. We say the promises, it will happen now. When you fear in the presence of the Lord our God and walk and carry his cross every day, the desires of your heart, it shall be answered, says 1 John, because we are doing the will of God the Father, we cannot go against his will. If it is His will according to His word that the things have to be done properly, certainly they will do it. Therefore the scripture concludes, Jacob I have loved, Esau I have hated, because it is omniscient knowledge of the Lord our God. In the same manner, every believer in this church age, being born before the foundation of the world for the grace of His work to the praise of His glory, He has made them to be holy and blameless, and He has given a chance for us to understand in Revelation 2 and 3, Whosoever has an hear, let him hear, and him he overcometh. That means taking care of his chastity. The chastity to be exposed to one husband. Taking care to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Taking care constantly to be in the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Taking care not to grieve, not to squelch, neither to deceive or lie to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Trembling to be aware that this earthen vessel has been given the divine treasure of the Lord our God and we have to pay it back to the full. By thinking upon Christ, by reflecting upon Christ, by having the mind of Christ taking care in each and every minute details that which should be to the glory of the Lord our God and not to dishonor him in even a minute thought but getting every thought into captivity for Christ and taking care about this true and unique spiritual life 
when you are able to perform these things, though you are alive or dead, if you are alive, your duty is to serve to the Lord our God. If you go down, you know very well, you shall not be ashamed. The point what I want to tell dear brethren, comparing to Psalms 22, 29, in order to understand all that you be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship, that is the believers who are growing up daily in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, and all that they go to, down to the dust shall bow before him. And the Hebrew word for bow is to kara, that is nothing but again to kneel down. Philippians 2, 5 through love and again being fulfilled over here. Every knee shall bow down and kneel down in his presence and every tongue shall confess the point what I want to tell if our Lord our God loved Jacob and hated Esau and if he's telling for those who have been predestined those whom have called him as justified who are the people who have been called that they believe the gospel of my Christ. They believe my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the only spiritual substitute to death which he took on the cross and now he took our place. Therefore, we are here to lay down our souls to the Lord our God. And what it is by renovating the standards of your thinking rather than growing up estates of gold and silver and being not able to realize that you have to be saved by faith alone in Christ alone and having your treasure of film coated by Satan being blinded, becoming lame and becoming the things pertaining to blemish for your work and not able to understand this great reality which has been given for us in the church age such a great ministerial work which has been laid on upon our shoulders but yet we say no Lord we don't believe that Satan comes to blind you by giving you the source to earn money And it gives you number one priority to earn money because your family should run by money. Your children should earn money. I don't deny the things which have to be paid to the Caesar. They have to be paid to the Caesar and to the things to the God of our Lord. To God for Him. But you have your time to pay. Every breath, 24 hours. The tithe of your time which you need to pay to the Lord before he could go bow down and kneel before his presence of Kara, you should be alert to realize. And that's the reason why I'm telling for you, though to them he have called, he has justified, he has justified to them, he has predestined to become, to confirm to the image of his dear beloved son, to confirm, confirm, confirm. Sun Morphe, producing in you the morphetic character of Christ. And what is happening today in our pulpits? They say our Lord's predestination is only for one or some people of His choice. Those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they have the sperm of Christ. They are the choice men of the Lord. And no matter however you may think, you can survive. The concluding verse of the same Psalms 22-29. It teaches to us to realize, dear brethren, that everyone, though being predestined in the Lord's mind, if they don't believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, none can keep alive his own soul. And the Hebrew word chaya, which we have described long time. And the chaya wherewith we have read in the things pertaining for the same chapter was 26 the meek shall eat and be satisfied they shall praise the Lord that seek him your heart shall live forever again the Hebrew word chaya and for a believer the great life begins only by the word of the Lord of a God chaya through the daily intake of Bible doctrine our right relationship begins only by daily taking Bible doctrine Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord of a God, which is nothing but Bible doctrine. 
really what a privilege it is when our Lord our God has given for us to go back and look and seek and search from the original languages of the scriptures though we are not of that origin but in the eternity passion is mine to be the choicest believers for his glory he chooses for us to learn and to understand by making our path straight when we have a right and true desire to the Lord our God and in that Hebrew Greek and Aramic when we go back and learn we really understand how to be free from the filth of the translation how to be free from the filth of the interlinear and get back into the original Hebrew Greek and Aramic and when our communicate communicate one word so that it can forsake another thousand words of explanation for example the Hebrew word Chaya the life which we have noted long back and here we can find in Psalms 22 29 in concluding verses to teach none shall keep alive or none can keep alive his own soul his own nepesh why they cannot keep his own soul to be alive because when they go down or bow down to the dust or when they die they will truly find their beliefs have been vanished because there are no gods apart from my lord and savior jesus christ the only unique lord of a god the gods of men being made by the hands of men to deceive themselves and to have the journey on this earth in the terms pertaining to their belly cannot save you. They cannot look, they cannot perceive, they cannot talk, they cannot walk. They are man-made images. And Christ our Lord our God says, I am the only way, the truth and the life. And they're not some religion like the Mamadinians may not believe the, the idols, what they could get back into the I daimonian idotes in the gold, silver, or copper, or the things pertaining to wood or stone. Yet they have forgot the right path, being our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And they believe for themselves how great is their religion books, how great is this angel. And dear brethren, let them have their own debates. We are not worried. But their soul cannot be kept alive. None can keep or none can be alive. Or a great conclusion of the verse it is for us in Psalms 22 29, which says, None can keep alive his own soul. And what a privilege it is for us to understand that though in this great and unique dispensation of the church age much is given for us and much information has been clearly given for us by daily exposition of the scriptures in the original languages of the word of the Lord of a God in Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and intending for them to be trained every day yet they want to take a chance, particularly the believers, to be burnt off at the judgment seat of Christ for the deeds and the works they perform, the legalistical works, the works what they think it could have attained them salvation. For example, the baptism, which is not. Baptism is an answer for your clear conscience towards the Lord of our God to say that you have dead and buried in the Lord and you have been risen in Christ. And henceforth you are taking the responsibilities of the word of the Lord of our God for the Christian dumb and certainly you are walking in truth. That's not a way of salvation. Salvation is always only one by faith. The only way what he has said in the past, the present as well. The past batak in the present pistos. And he says, believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. And pistos in Karyan kaise tese soon. Believe, believe, believe. And after believing, your deeds will manifest. Up to what extent? You're really walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, or grieving Him. 
how much alert you are to become the sapphire, the accounted one, to recount your name in the midst of the congregation of the Lord of our God. And you come to write the Bible in the filth of the translation and get out from there. You go to write the second time in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. And you come to write the third time in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic of the original languages. The second time in the interlinear, the third time in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. And you continue that till 22 times. And the valor and the vigor is not being found in the herbs, what you may think. Or the food, what you may think. The great valor and vigor has been found in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Because we have been surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses. The devil's servant is nothing. And we have been set to mark and to make a note. Those who don't walk according to the rule of such great pleasure of Bible doctrine, daily carrying their cross to the praise of His glory, being lavished with great grace and love of God the Father. In Romans 16, 17, it has been said, depart from them. You don't have any part or role with them, depart. We are having ahead a great life, we are having ahead of a great thinking, we are having ahead a great reality for us to understand. Why do you want to get once again entangled into a cobweb of your mental attitude sins? Clear the cobwebs. Come back and kneel down and write the Bible. And they have been said in Colossians 4 to read this, this letter even in the place of lack of love this year. And the strong code of 314 it says in the Attic Greek to read. But the real intention of it meant to say so that they can have to perceive and to have a thorough knowledge of it anagete. To have the thorough knowledge to make them to perceive. And that's why repetition, that's why inculcation, that's why day by day in every mannerism of the word of the Lord of God exposing for you to show forth if faith alone in Christ alone is the way of salvation then for you to have a true life to keep yourself alive in the work of the Lord of God it is to depend upon the word of the Lord of God in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit breath by breath and daily grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That's very simple. And many people may think who is going to come every day to the mind of Christ. We are not worried. We are not begging anyone to come. Neither we are here to convince of you about this. But be sure if you are not able to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine for which cause you have been kept alive where 1 Timothy 2 4 says none should perish but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge or the epinosis knowledge of Bible doctrine be sure that your sin will take care of you because everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of Bible doctrine not just gnosis but epinosis and epinosis are those maximum glorifying believers the winner believers in Christ No matter what, they look and understand that they are the bond slaves and they are the prisoners for their master in Christ in heaven. And it is he who shall provide all the desires of their heart when they walk according to the truth. And they learn to understand that we are in Christ and he is in us because of that Holy Spirit of God given for us to have that fellowship. And that Holy Spirit of God, after you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, will make you a human spirit to get recreated and that human spirit is the only communion path for the Lord of God in heaven because earlier we are dichotomy having soul and body but now after believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we have become trichotomous having spirit soul and body therefore now the human spirit having constantly to be in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit will certainly come back and take for you to be in the mentoring ministry of him and change the facets of your soul from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint Therefore, Satan wants to put pressure upon the pathos condition of your soul. That's what we read in John 16:33. The condition where Satan loves to constantly put upon you, and it goes on to teach all the time to put pressure, the Thilipsan pressure of John 16:33, where with Christ our Lord of God says, In this world you have pressure, but I have overcome. I have won. I have taken the victory. I have overcome the world. And the in the world 
world you will have to be taken by the pressure of satan upon where the tilipson of pressure of satan upon where upon your soul Therefore, it doesn't want you to become trichotomous because Satan knows very well when you become from the things pertaining to the dichotomy to trichotomy by having your spirit activated, having your spirit in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then you know very well we are in Christ. He dwells in us and we remain in Him and you are overcome because you are of God, of little children, so that greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world and the wicked one cannot even touch you when you know that and you are having constant fellowship with Lord God, the Holy Spirit, Satan wants to put pressure upon your soul. It says why you want to go to Bible class every day. It says why you want to wear your clothes every day of the righteousness and the divine holiness of the Lord of a God in Endikai, Sunekai, Hoseatis, Thessalatia, in the terms of the benignity of truth. It says weekly once is enough. But the burden that has been laid down upon every believer to carry their cross and the word which it says for us till the end remain faithful it takes minimum 40 to 50 years to complete the entire bible from genesis 1 1 to revelation 20 21 minimum how much of doctrine has been given for us how much of true life been expounded for us in the scriptures in the original hebrew greek and aramaic And it has been said for us in Psalms 20 to 29 what we have read just now, teaching to us to realize the importance of the very word which says, and none can keep alive his own soul. Not talking about the spirit. The soul which will be there for us to think in the standards of mentality. And which goes further to act by the Holy Spirit of the Lord our God when we are teaching to you the gospel or spreading to you the gospel to act in you the substitutory human spirit. And that soul should be there for you to believe and to say the volition yes. And therefore here it has been mentioned the soul. It is not the rack. And how important it is for dichotomous to become trichotomous. How important it is when our Lord our God said in John chapter 3 verses 3 through following verse number 8 that he should be born again the religion, the religious leader Nicodemus. How important it is, how great it is. And upon that soul Satan wants to put always the tulips on pressure. But with Christ we have overcome the world. What a great and unique privilege it is for us. With Christ our Lord our God who said. That you are of God little children. And the technon crowd which he calls for us every day. Demanding to give our lives without blame. So that you cannot limp and walk. In the terms of the details of this life as number one priority. And if other goes for us to teach the film coat of Satan which has been covering your eyes, be aware of that. And what do we find? We find the men being more worse than the unbelievers, though they are believers in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Morally, they are impure. But the great glory and joy what they celebrate for their idols. How purely they keep for their festivals. How the way our Lord of God has designed for them in the past dispensation. The Feast of the Tabernacles, the Feast of the Booths, the Feast of the Passovers. And how much great they have been designed for them to certainly spend their entire life in serving the Lord our God without blame in purity. And here in the church age for us to cherish and nourish in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, every day to celebrate that. But that where do we end up? 
rather than celebrating the glorious glory of the Lord our God in the fellowship of Him day by day in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. We are grieving and squelching. We are more infidels than these people who serve idols, who serve their beliefs for circumcision. And we are entertaining not to cherish and nourish in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by making every believer to understand and to realize this great dwelling place of the tabernacle of the Lord of God in the church. They are not able to look or seek or search or understand either that this great burden which has been laid down upon our shoulders in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which has to be so great, because of the highest and the best prayer of Baltimore privileges being surrounded by the wall of fire all the time. And if ever you regret, you go back home and you say, I haven't made use of all the prayer of Baltimore privileges with the highest and the best ones given for us ever in the church. And I have let it go in vain by not believing the truth. Wake up, you are the temple of the Lord. Wake up, you are the indwelling mentoring ministry. Let God, the Holy Spirit, special place to serve Him. You are being called to be the sufferer. You are being called to be the scribe. Wake up, wisdom as wisdom has to be justified among our children. Wake up for your true life in Christ. Wake up for your true calling in the Lord. Wake up for your true privileges to be absolutely used 100% make an effective use of it for 100% don't just let it go to use only 1% or even in fact indeed the people do not even know that they have these privileges they haven't even qualified to look upon that percentage of labor in them wake up and what is this that we're going through today in the church age dear brethren not able to realize your true calling, not able to realize to walk worthy of your calling. Establishing assets of gold and silver is your life. Though the Bible says the root cause for all evil is money and the people who follow that have many sorrows, the people will say, no, we are happy with such many sorrows. And they say, Lord has prospered them. Our Lord, our God's principle is very unique. He calls to our mind to understand. I have prepared and kept for you. Go there. Do not carry with you many things. When I have established, teach them the word of the Lord, our God. Make them to develop in the Lord's mind. Go to the other place. But in today's media, you can record and kept and give it. And we know very well, people won't change. The simple point why they won't change, they love the deeds of darkness more than to expose them in the light of the word of the Lord of God. It is their fate. If you have to be the true believer, the authentic believer, the genuine believer, Show up your marks, as Apostle Paul says, look upon my marks. Let no man trouble me, I have the marks of my Christ. Therefore he says, I imitate Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you imitate me. Because we all share the same sperm of Christ. And the generation shall serve him, saith our Lord our God. That generation is the church age being indwelt by the Trinity in every believer's body, whoever is a believer in the Lord. The age which is for us, unique, which shall not again reoccur in, the, uh, reoccur in the future or it was in the past, only the present, the generation which shall serve the Lord our God. This great generation, dear brethren, which has been given for us as the dwelling place, as the true glory of the Lord of God. And 
it shall be accounted to the Lord Adonai the sufferer the seed which has labored for his work not the labor of their own physical agony but the striving for the things pertaining to the Lord's glory by the one which indwells in us Colossians 1 23 to 29 the special agnos of my labor through the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and demanding for us from Romans 8 as well verse number 26 and following the Sunani Lamboranai the joint partaker the joint worker with us it is he who is going to labor through us we are only the vessels to be sanctified and be ready for his work And it is his will to use those who are prepared. What are we? Our mental energy cannot open up our mouth. Our much sophisticated learning cannot open up our mouth. It is he who has to teach us. It is he who has to train us. It is he who has to guide us. It is he who has to open up our mouth because he said the prophets are his mouth and the righteousness of him dwell in them. Therefore, no weapon that is formed against them will ever prosper. He knows very well who are the hearers for these words. Our duty is to keep the things pertaining to his mind every day to expound it in the word of the Lord our God. And we cannot let go so easily on this earth. In this battle of Yon, the name, the treasure and the fame of my Lord into the things pertaining to the cheapest alibis of our own brain-chailed imaginations. And to say, Lord, I couldn't know, I forgot to do the work. Be aware when he says in Luke chapter 12 verses 41 and following those who haven't known his will those who weren't ready to learn about his will even they will be beaten with many straps no excuse the Lord's will is that none should perish but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of the Lord's glory when he wills that he certainly needs that in this church age that we should be to the praise of his glory in his grace. No excuses for right. Think about this issues, dear brethren, a generation to be for the Lord's work as affairs. And we shall come back and look and consider tomorrow in the same divine fellowship of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit as he leads us to understand his mind because of his great omnipotent power which reigneth forever and forever and in nothing to be ashamed when we stand in his presence so which way you want to go dear brother and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow with our head bowed and eyes closed the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life in order to to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour that is the moment itself we shall have this eternal truth the eternal truth for us so very simple believing Christ you shall be saved whereas for the believer the greatest merit is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possession of the truth and the truth shall set you free and for the pastor teacher the greatest merit is to cure us with Lagan herald the word in season and out of season because the diamond from my witnesses wherewith you have been called the number one diamond from my witnesses in willing trinity followed by Bible in our hands and number two diamond from my witnesses our hearers if there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a privilege it is for us to have the marks of an authentic believer in us. Father, to teach at every breath of our life the duty of ambassadorship laid on upon our shoulders. As you said, Jacob, I loved, Isa, I hated. So, o Lord, the people whom I have chosen and kept for their work, O Lord, to shine like the double light. The light of you being the sun and the light of us being the moon.
Help us, O oh Lord, to reflect every path that we walk in thy presence, to be holy and blameless, so that these unbelievers could believe upon thee and understand what is thy gracious glory which has been given for us in the church age. So that, Lord, so that, Lord Father, even they also could come and realize what a great thing it is that they have been given in Christ this great eternal life. Because we share it, we also want others also to share. We love to reflect the way how Stephen reflected. And we ask, Father, if it is thy will, O Lord, help us to more crank out more and more thy glory, thy grace, in every mannerism of our thinking, whatever it could be according to thy will. So that, Father, in nothing to be ashamed when we come, and as many as be are possible for us to snatch them out from the hell of fire and get them to thy glory by teaching us the path of truth, the way of truth. As Paul and Barnabas was been witnessed, O Lord, even we also have to be witness to the points to say, cleaving unto the Lord our God with the whole purpose of our heart and to tell these are the men which shall show the right path of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim, the only path, the only path that reigns forever and forever and the only existent path so that unbelievers also could, re could realize and understand what a life that we live in Christ. In Christ, much less pure, less gracious name we pray, Father. Those who are listening to these tapes have a blessing for which cause you have called them to listen to thy word. In Christ's name we ask our Lord. May Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in these terms. Amen.